So uh, hi to everyone watching this Green Left discussion, wherever that may be. I'm here today with uh, our friend and comrade, Green Left writer, Federico Fuentes. And today we are very excited and honored uh, to welcome Luana Alves from Sao Paulo, Brazil onto our program. Let me uh, give everyone a bit of uh, background on Luana. Luana is a psychologist and activist working in the black feminist and LGBT movements in Brazil. Uh, in 2020, she became the youngest councillor ever elected uh, in Sao Paulo, representing the Party of Socialism and Freedom, uh, PESOL. She's, uh, she's also a member of the MES, MES, the Socialist Left Movement Tendency within PESOL. And today we're going to be looking at Brazilian national politics and the election set down for October 2nd. Luana, welcome to Green Left. Thank you. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. So I'm looking forward to it because Israel, my comrade, told me about your organization. I don't really, uh, I, I didn't know a lot about socialist organizations in Australia. So I'm happy to meet you. I've been in contact with some organiza organizations um, mostly from Latin America and USA. So I'm, I'm, I'm really happy to know you guys from Australia. Let's talk. Yeah, indeed. Thank you. All right. So to kick off for comrades watching out there who maybe don't have a, a, an understanding of the current political reality on the ground, can you give us a brief, brief overview of the situation with regard to the election? I think most uh, most of us know something about President Joe Bolsonaro, but can you see a likely victory for Lula and the Workers' Party? And how serious are Bolsonaro's Trump-style efforts to of election denying? Uh, so let's let's begin from the beginning. Uh, I, I think this is the I guess the most important election, presidential election in the last decades here in Brazil, uh, because so uh, Jair Bolsonaro, he's not only the a representation of the far right in Brazil, he's a representation of some new movements that they really question uh, uh, the system, but not in, in a way, not in our way. So they, they, they say that they, they are going to question the system, they are going to question the powerful people, but in a really dangerous way. They put uh, the power, like uh, they, they create a narrative saying that the power is with the poor people, is with women, is with black people. So they really created a kind of alternate uh, reality. Uh, where they are uh, the, the true combatants of the of the freedom, they 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 kind of created this. So, but here in Brazil, uh, this uh, this means some dangerous implications because here we have a really really uh, our country is structured in racism, in exploitation, and in colonization. So there is a very 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 deep uh, social inequality economical inequality. So when this kind of narrative of far right nar narrative, this far right movement, uh, when they start to, to make roots here in Brazil, uh, they have the power to, to kill people because they not only like, I, 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 what I mean with this, uh, in some other countries with less poverty, with less, um, with less exploitation, this kind of movement, they can create a big uh, mess, uh, like in Europe, like in United States. But here in Brazil, uh, when our country is so full of violence, is so full of poverty, is so full of you know structural violence, this kind of movement they make a big mess. <laughs> they make a big mess because this kind of um, saying, this kind of narrative, it actually means that. We have more uh, more uh, rich people wanting to exploit their workers. Uh, we have more gunned men uh, that they are really uh, uh, they really going to kill. So this is very uh, dangerous. So these elections, they are uh, we we have this point where these guys they not only want to create something new, they want to like make Brazil go a lot of decades ago. 
a lot of centuries ago. It's very dangerous. It's not only the far right movement that we see in some other parts of the world, because they connected with something that is very deep in Brazil. There is this structural exploitation and violence. So uh, what, what we have now is that Bolsonaro is trying to, he has some, some weapons. So uh, he has the scare of PT. Some people really are scared, are scared of PT, of Workers' Party. When I say PT, it's Workers' Party. Because in the, in the end, in the second, uh, in the end of the PT government here in Brazil, uh, the global crisis really, uh, really started to, to, to make a lot of, pro to bring a lot of problems in Brazil. So people, a lot of people, a lot of working people, they are really scared of the, the second part of PT government. And there were some corruption scandals. And people, they associate the corruption scandals with the crisis. Do you know what I mean? So the global crisis that really arrived here in Brazil and really uh, uh, they really produced un unemployment, they produced more poverty. People associate that PT stole the people, they are thieves, they are corrupt, uh, they, they, they are, I don't know how to say that, they are thieves. Uh, they, they, they associate the corruption scandals with the crisis. So some people are scared. This is one of the weapons of Bolsonaro. Another weapon is the already rooted, um, the already rooted, you know, the, the things that the Brazilian people is to have, the, the more conservative roots of Brazilian people, like uh, misogyny, like racism, like things that people already are, but you know, they, 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 can, they, can, they can be better. But Bolsonaro, he really brings the worst in a lot of the working people. In a lot of guys, you know, Bolsonaro is very famous, very popular between working men in Brazil because he really puts this, uh, this narrative of, you know, uh, uh, anti-feminism. So we, we have some problems. I think that Lula is now well positioned in the polls. Like uh, for the polls, Lula is going to be elected, but it's not really a guarantee. I don't think it's a guarantee that Lula is going to be elected because there is a lot of problems that we cannot solve. And PT is, is bringing a project, is presenting the people a project that is not a new project. It's an old project. It's a project that they don't really say, uh, they say about the unemployment, they say about the hunger that is back in Brazil, but they don't really say about anti-system. PT, in, the, in its beginning, in the 80s and 90s, used to be a more leftist party, used to be a party that was with the unions, that was with the social movement, but it's not now, you know, that PT is now going to more of a social democrat party. So uh, the, the anti-system is still with Bolsonaro. He's still the guy that is working to, that, that, that's going to work against the powerful people. He has this, this, this kind of, 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 of narrative that he's going to be the guy who beats the system, that he's going to be the guy who beats the left, how we feel they, they are the same. So Lula, uh, people really, some people want to vote for Lula because uh, now Brazil is really in a big crisis with Bolsonaro, economical crisis, healthcare crisis, a lot of crisis, but, some, but Lula is still, can, uh, is still, they don't present a new program for Brazilian people. A lot of people are going to vote for Lula because he's the last worst. It's not a it's not a vote with hope. It's not a vote with uh, a, a, a desire of change. You know. So this worries me. This put me worried. I don't know if you guys understood me. Yeah, that was really good. Excellent. <clears throat> Thank you. I'll um I'll just uh I'll, I'll I'll press on. I want to ask you about the role of the military in Brazil. I mean, we a lot of us here know something of the the years of the military dictatorship and um i believe that there's now more military officers or former military officers serving in bolsonaro's cabinet than during the years of the actual dictatorship and i've seen some headlines hysterical headlines in the west recently new york times washington post warning of the possibility of a military coup if the military is unhappy with the results is this is there any threat of this or is this just media hysteria i don't think any military coup is necessary because they are in the government 
They, they, they are in the yeah. government like, like, like they were civilians. So they don't really need a coup. They don't really need to put, um, let me try to find this word. Uh, they don't need to put tanks in the streets to say it's a military coup. So because they are in the cabinet. So, but what happens is that a lot of the old militaries, the I don't know how to say that they retired militaries. The it, it, it's kind of retirement, like the the old militaries. Uh, some of them are really, really. They come from another background. They come from a background of the seventies of the they are formed they are really ideological they are really against the left so because they are from a time uh, of the brazilian dictatorship in the brazilian dictatorship i, I think you guys know that that some of uh, uh, there was a generation of brazilian militaries these these old guys now that they studied in usa they went to the war school they you know uh, the war school they really formed some latin american detectors they went to the school they, they they have this tradition so some of them are more aggressive some of them have a more visceral discourse you know some of them they they are more you know and, and this is carries the press the brazilian press and i guess the american press they speak to the brazilian press and they uh, and they pass this scare but I, i'm not trying to say it's not dangerous but i think that right now what it leaves is a kind of the, the military uh, oppression is already in the 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 system in the bolsonaro system because it's not only the the it's not only the military here in brazil we have some stage uh, military forces. So, like, um, I don't know how, how it is in Australia, but the military, the, the police here, the, the cops, they are uh, connected to the military. So, we have uh, these uh, state policies here in Brazil. They respond to the governors, to the governors of each state, uh, not for the president and not for mayors, but for state, in the state level police force. And these guys, they already are ideological. And, and, these, and most cops in Brazil, they support Bolsonaro. And they, they have a kind of systematic oppression against poor people, against black people, that is very similar to the oppression of the left in the 70s. So they really sophisticated the method of oppression, the method of torture many times. So if you see, there is something that is very curious and very uh, terrible. Uh, when you see some old methods of torture, of torture, you know, that they used to, to use in the Brazilian dictatorship, it's the same methods of torture they use now in the favelas. They use now with the young men, with the young kids that, you know, are in the streets, but they say they're drug dealers. So it is really the same, you know, the same structure. So uh, I think that now what we, we really have to, to fight is not really a coup from the military, but it's how they are really free to do whatever they want in the democracy here in Brazil. This is the, the most dangerous thing, e even in the government, even in the Lula government. Because I don't think that Lula is going to put all the militaries out. He's not going to do this. It's not crazy. And, and this is not this, his problem. This is not his politics. So I think the most, uh, what we have to, to really worry about is first, to, to make Lula win. This is the first thing, to defeat Bolsonaro, this is the first, but secondly, the most important, important thing is to fight uh, in, in the Lula government for the military to go out, for the military to lose strength. And this is no be made like a day another day. This is a process. I think the thing that uh, we're going to have to do this, more than worry about a, 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 a mediatic coup. Yeah, I mean, we see that around the world where state suppression has become more sophisticated. You don't really need an old school military coup anymore. You can just uh, take up some senior government posts and, and integrate with the with police forces and, and, and repress people that way. Yeah, thank you. Um, just yeah, and, final... and, and you can say, so, so and you can say that your target is a criminal, even if it's not a criminal. So, but if you say he's a criminal, you are allowed to do anything. You can do anything because he's a criminal. He deserves to die. He can be tortured. So this is kind of the new, 
uh, uh, the new web. Yeah. Finally, um, on the election and the forces at play, um, I, uh, we read about the brutal murders of um, Dom Phillips and Bruno Pereira um, recently. And I know, I know that Lula has vowed to take on the illegal miners and the illegal loggers who uh, I guess were responsible for those deaths. What about the giant agribusinesses um, that not only hold the keys to the future of the Amazon, but they also play an enormous role in the Brazilian economy? Um, are they a hostile factor in the election? And has Lula tried to uh, speak to them to, to you know, uh, make overtures to them, the giant kind of farming businesses? So I think Lula is trying to, to talk to them because they were part of the Lula government. Because, you know, in Lula government, uh, so let me try to, to, to explain. In the first Lula government, uh, the big farming in Brazil really, they really had a, I don't know how to say that, they, 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 get, they got stronger. They got strong for a lot of factors, including China. They were really buying a lot of Brazilian grains, a lot of Brazilian crops, and they and they were really go, grow, grow, growing stronger and and going for Amazon and taking lands in Amazon to grow more, to grow more soy, more beans, and more rice to send to China because uh, the the commercial balance was good to Brazil at that time. So they and they really and, and this growing, they destroy Amazon, they destroy native people, they destroy reserves for the native people in Brazil that live in Amazon and know and know how to live in Amazon with, you know, uh, in a sustainable way. Uh, so this is very, this is how Lula government happening. Uh, so they don't really have a lot to lose with Lula politics. But what I think there is a, a conflict because some of the militants of PT they are really uh, ambientalists. They are people who worry about the environment. So th there is this conflict because some people of the left, even of the more social democracy left, they're kind of, uh, they say they're green. They say they worry about environment. So Lula, they, Lula needs to keep like a, a double speech. They, they need to speak something with the ruralists, with the farming guys, and something with uh, the ambientalists. So this is what he made in his first government. I think this is what he's going to make now. Uh, he's going to, you know, uh, some some of the sectors. Uh, I think he's going to 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 defeat, like the the mining. I think the the illegal mining. Maybe I, I think PT. Uh, they, they're not really going to to destroy the illegal mining. They they, they are going to try to make them legal. They they, are, they I think they're going to really. It, 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 it's not going to be just like Bolsonaro that not only tries to. Uh, not only he helps the illegal mining, like uh, actually helps, like without hiding, you know. So I think Lula, if you're going to try to make the illegal mining legal, but I, I really don't think he's going to to mess with the farming, with the big farm. I don't think. Uh, I, I really don't. So I, I think, uh, and, and this kind of uh, murders like happened, like what happened in, with Bruno and Don Phillips. I think they are, they are keep happening. Uh, especially with the with the Brazilian activists, this is very sad and very terrible uh, because there is a lot of uh, states in northern in the north part of Brazil where there is a lot of killings of murders of activists like activists uh, that work in the land because there is this difference in Brazil there is the agro business there is the farming business and there is the uh, family uh, agro and there is the family business in the land. The most people in Brazil have their food from the uh, family agriculture. So like it, it's like like 70%, 70% more than a half of Brazilian are fed with the small farmers. So these small farmers, they are, I think they, uh, this is the kind that, that we work with. So there is this, this, this is a difference between the big farming and the small farming. The small farming is not is not going for Amazon. They are in the in the place that is not Amazon. They they really have more sustainable ways to work the land, to work or, or everything. So we have this uh, one of the ways that we try to to beat the agribusiness. It's really strengthening the small farmers. This is a kind of strategy to 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 strengthen the the small farmers that they will make food 
and don't make common commodities. And this is one of the ways that we work. Okay, great. Thank you. All right. Well, let's uh, well, let's look at, look uh, more broadly at the the makeup of the of the uh, of politics in Brazil. Can you tell us a bit more about uh, PESOL, the makeup of the party? Where would it sit on a kind of left-right political spectrum? And then also maybe tell us a bit about PESOL's decision to offer support for the Lula campaign. Has that caused any controversy with, with far-left tendencies? Yeah, PESOL now it's in a historical moment. PESOL has to choose a way because right now it is not a, it's not a, a chosen way. Uh, PESOL uh, uh, started in Brazil in 2005. Uh, we, uh, uh, it, it was Lula government, so PESOL was part of PT, I, I, I think you guys know it. Uh, PESOL is um, it's a division of PT. So when PESOL started, it was in the beginning of the Lula government, 2005. Uh, it was when a part of the congressmen of PT didn't want to vote for a project that Lula sent to the Congress that was a bad project for some uh, public workers, federal public workers. It's like a, a, a small reform in the retirement policy of public workers. Uh, it, it was a small reform, but it was bad for, for public workers. So uh, uh, there was this this four uh, congressmen, three congressmen and one congresswoman that uh, wanted to vote for no. And it was like the, the first uh, problem uh, that Lula had with the, his own basis in the Congress. So uh, this is, uh, of course, it, it was a process. This was like the, the tip of the iceberg, you know. So what happened is that uh, these four Congress, these three congressmen and one congresswoman, they were expelled from PT. You know, they, they voted for no, they voted no for the project of the, the reform and they were expelled. So PESOL began to form as a new party from these four Congress, you know, and then they, they, they begin to form and, and there was like a split in PT, not a, like a half half a split, like a, 10% max. So, but it, it was big because PT is a big party. So uh, this is how PESOL be began. Uh, and from, from then, uh, PESOL, when gaining strength, PESOL really started to have a lot of uh, um, militants from the universities, from unions, from social movements. I, uh, uh, I, I, got, I got to know PESOL in the university when I was like in my first year of university, there was a, 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 a group of PESOL in my university. So we, we really aggregated people. And right now uh, in the Bolsonaro government, PESOL is the, like the most vocal opposition. This is our role to be the vocal opposition, to be an opposition that doesn't have any kind of relation with the government. This is very important to us because some of the congressmen of PT have some writing relationship with the government that are related to the money and like uh, and how the money is spread to the to the country. So we, we really perceive it's really the the opposition that doesn't have any kind of tie with the government. So right now, what happens uh, is that PT is putting a big pressure in PSOL. Uh, for PESOL to be like kind of this coalition for democracy. It's not a left coalition, it's not a socialist coalition, it's a big coalition for the, the democracy against Bolsonaro. And of course we, have, we are part of this coalition, we are part of this coalition, but this doesn't mean that we cannot have a candidate. And this was the, the, the big, this was the big uh, uh, controversy in PESOL because uh, 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 most, uh, most militants of the party uh, thought that it was better to not have a candidate and to not to be, but to have a candidate here in Brazil means a lot because there were public debates in the television and the public debates in the television, we can talk to all the people. In the last elections, in the few last elections, when in the, in the presidential elections, when PESOL had its candidate, it was like a big growing time for us because we, we had the opportunity to show ourselves to the whole country in the television debates. 
So it was when a lot of militants started to enter Pessoal. It was always four in four years. We had a big sprout in Pessoal because people saw our candidates to say the television, our ideas, our ideas about socialism, our ideas about our struggles, our fights. And this is a very rare opportunity. Because usually, you know, we, we are really hidden. We don't have a lot of channels to, to talk to the people besides the streets and, you know. But, but to, Nation Wild, it's a really rare opportunity. So now to not have a candidate means to not uh, be a party, means to not have independence, means to not uh, have a different project from PT. This is the thing. We can't be part of a political coalition without being part of an electoral coalition. This is our debate. So what happened is that unfortunately, 60% uh, of the party, 60% uh, of the party voted. Uh, he, we had the internal voting and 60% of the party voted to support Lula uh, from the beginning. Uh, I, I am part of the 40% that voted for no, but we lost. <laughs> this is what happened. Uh, and now we are with Lula because you know, the central uh, democratic Centralism. So I'm going to that. That's it. I'm going to make campaign for Lula from the beginning. It's fine, but I think uh, we're going to pay the price. We really are going to pay the price. And now uh, we have the second uh, and most definitive decision. There is the decision that if Lula wins, uh, some guys, some people of the party, some militants don't see a problem in being part of the government. We see a problem like taking a ministry, taking a secretary, like um, what happens here in Brazil. When there is a coalition of parties and this coalition wins, like, uh, like if, if Lula wins in October, let's say that Lula, won, Lula wins, that's it. And there is a lot of indications for bureaus, ministries, secretaries, uh, departments, that is for indication for the president. And what usually happens is that the parties that are that that help it, the campaign, that help it, this candidate, even if they are not the party of the candidate, they have some positions in the government. Like they can indicate people to be in the government, like to be some human rights minister or you know some kind of ministry, and to be part of the government. And we think that Pessoal should not be part of the government. We shall not take any position in the government. We can make campaign for Lula now, but even he wins. Uh, if, if we are part of the government, we are uh, we, we're going to not have any borders with PT. People are going to look at us and say, oh, this is PT, this is the government. And a socialist party is not a government of a social democrat so democratic government. This is like the end. To me, it's like the end because uh, how can I, uh, how can us uh, talk to people that trust us, that want to know more about socialism, that want to know more about uh, uh, social movements, and talk to them if I'm part of the government. And this is a government that, you know, that is not a, a leftist government. I don't have any moral to talk to people. I don't have any way to talk to them. Oh, come on, uh, come to Pessoa, be part of my party. If there's a party that works with a government that is going to, to make uh, conciliatory decisions. So this is a, a really, I think this is the big um, controversy right now in the South. This is not defined yet. Yeah. Fred, uh, I know you've done some writing on the various tendencies in Brazil. Did you have anything to, to add or to ask Luana? Yeah, yeah, yep. Um, firstly, you know, thank you for providing this background to the elections, um, to what the, the PESOL, uh, the discussions that have been happening uh, in the PESOL. I think it's going to be of great interest um, uh, to people watching this, uh, to supporters of Green Left. Um, I think it's probably important to just note as well that um, because I know because of other interviews we've done with PESOL uh, comrades that um, even the 40% that you mentioned uh, who wanted to run a candidate uh, made it clear that they would support Lula in the second round. So it's also important for those who don't know that the Brazilian elections has a second round. Um, so this, so, and the likely, and the, there's a general understanding that Lula will make it to the second round. Uh, if, if not, of course. So, um, so I think that's that's yeah. It. He can even win in the first round. Yeah. Um, I what one one question that I had um, about a month ago, I spoke with um, uh, comrade uh, uh, Israel Dutra, uh, who explained to me in the interview that um, 
the the PESOL and in particular the MES uh, were pushing to convert August 11, which was at that point a, a, a day of student mobilizations into a, a national day of mobilizations against Bolsonaro. Could you maybe give us a bit of an idea of what what, ha what happened on August 11 and how, how successful were yeah. PESOL building that? Yeah, we, we, we were expecting more because what happened uh, is that in August 11, uh, there was the reading of a letter that was uh, two letters, actually. Uh, so there were two uh, different coalitions that made letters, uh, public letters, for the defense of democracy in Brazil. And the, the first letter was from the, the, the University of... It was for the law school of Sao Paulo. There is a law school in Sao Paulo. There is a very old law school, like the oldest in Brazil, and they were part of the politics in Brazil, like more than 50 presidents in Brazil were forming this law school. Uh, we have a work there. And this law school made a, a letter for the democracy after Bolsonaro called all the ambassador. Do you remember that? When Bolsonaro called the ambassador to say that the, the Brazilian election system were not safe and that it, it was really a dangerous step that he made. Never any president in Brazil ever uh, made any, uh, put any doubt about the election system. Never. Uh, to say there was a fraud. It's a very Trump thing that Bolsonaro exported to Brazil. So this is what happened. There was this reaction of the law school and another letter that was read in the law school, two, the two letters, uh, the, but not from the intellectuals and, and lawyers, but was made for a businessman. A lot of people, and it was a big thing because business people don't usually say anything about politics. But if they say to support Bolsonaro, so it was the first uh, public say of this business sector saying that Bolsonaro was not right about this. Like, like a no, like a, stop this, you know? So this, this, is, this was really, um, there was a lot of press and a lot of attention. So this was this thing. And what we wanted to do was uh, after the reading of the letter in this downtown Sao Paulo, the old downtown Sao Paulo, where the law school is located, to make a big riot against Bolsonaro. Not only a, a letter reading, you know. I was there, I was in the letter reading, okay, fine, democratic thing. But we wanted to make a street movement. Like, because a lot of people want to, to go to the streets against Bolsonaro. And, and, and also, this is good even for the elections. Because the elections is too, uh, they are they are not hot enough, you know. We, we, need, we need to make the, the elections hotter. It's too institutionalized, it's too, you know. And we want to, to make hotter by going to the streets and saying no Bolsonaro, because Bolsonaro is going, to, is calling for the streets. In the September 7, there is the Independence Day of Brazil. September September 7, in some days, uh, Bolsonaro is calling a big riot. This is very strange, right? Because a riot to support him. It's a riot for the president. It's really weird. But he's calling this, and a lot of uh, the organized right, they are going to the streets in this day. They are going to the streets to like uh, celebrate the independence of Brazil, but it's, 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 it's have a very strong uh, um, discourse for Bolsonaro. It's, a, it's like the independence of Brazil and the freedom of Brazil because the left wants to take Brazil back, the communists, like, you no, know, it's very, uh, one of the good things about, one of the few good things of uh, Lula presenting a note project is because this argument that they are the, the communists, people doesn't, doesn't believe this because the people, uh, they went to a uh, government of Lula, but two governments, and there was no socialism. This is not a this is not a really strong argument, no. Uh, so what what happened uh, is that we tried to make a street thing. It happened, but not it was not really strong because we, we could not call uh, all the unions because the unions some of most part of them are very controlled by PT. Um, the order of PT was to not going for the streets. They don't want. They don't want to go for this. They think that this is going to help Bolsonaro. This is going to uh, they, because they, they don't want to make up. They, they want to ensure that Lula wins the election, but not with any popular movement. Just win the election. Just that people just need to leave their house to vote, and that's it. Not leaving the house for anything else. Just for voting. 
not for going for protest, not for asking for anything more. That's just this. Uh, so what happened is, is that uh, most uh, unions and social movements that are tied to PT, they, they, they had the order to not go for the streets. Just uh, support the letters. That was this. So we had this, this problem. But there was a nice letter reading. It was good. It, it was positive. It could, it could be better, but it was positive because the letter reading um, show the, the big uh, reaction to Bolsonaro, in a way. Yeah, that's great. Thank you, Luana. I like your framing of making the elections hot or hotter. Um, something we can certainly do with here in Australia. Our elections here are so cold, they're colder than the Antarctica. It's, uh, Sorry? The, the elections here are very cold. Oh, that's bad. <laughs> we, bad. Need more, we need more heat, as you, uh, as you put it, in our elections. Um, that was great. Thank you for so much uh, wonderful information. Final, final point, and this is kind of an epic, uh, epic subject. So I'll, I'll please do your best to 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 keep it um, as as simple as possible. But I know you've done some fantastic work combating racism in your role um, as a counsel in South. Combining, Palo, sorry, com combating, combining? fighting, fighting. Fighting okay, racism okay. in your role as a Sao Paulo yeah. council. I, I was reading a lot about it um, in the last few days. Can you transpose what you know onto the larger national stage? Tell us a, a little bit about how race and class shapes national politics in Brazil. I know it's, a, it's an epic tale that goes back centuries, but if you can give us a, a little bit of an insight there. How class, I, I, let me see if I understood what you... Yeah, I mean, uh, the what ties are, but, yeah, how, how, how race influences politics how cl and, and how class influences politics in Brazil. Oh, okay. Is there, is so there, is there, is there a racial divide? Uh, can, you, can you see a clear, clear racial divide yeah. in the electorate? Yeah, yeah. for example. Yeah. Uh, so uh, let's put this... Uh, I can't really condense this. I'm going to, to say a lot, I'm sorry, because this is a very complex uh, uh, subject. So here in Brazil, uh, we don't really have, uh, in the beginning, in the roots of Brazil, there was no uh, a thing like a working class. These are things from the, there was a, a slave class. You know, in Brazil, uh, there was one of the few countries in the world uh, where the enslaved people were the vast majority of people, like 18% of people were slaves in Brazil. Only in the beginning of the, of the 20th century, or on the beginning of the 20th century, end of the 19th century, uh, there was uh, waves of European groups migrating to Brazil. Like it happened in the USA, like Italians and Germans and European people that, uh, poor people, uh, working people that went to Brazil uh, to settle here and to be working class, like working in the industry, working, being paid for their work, even being poor. But before that, there was not like a Brazilian working class. There was not really a national identity. You know, it, it was like a big uh, farm with enslaved people. That was what happened. And so the, 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 the very notion of class in Brazil is not like, uh, it's very peculiar because the labor here, the work here is a thing for slaves, is a thing for the poor. It's not something that people want to, to be proud about working, especially uh, uh, especially the, the not intellectual work, the, the brace, the, the arms work. You know, so what happened uh, is that there is a big connection be between uh, class and race in, in Brazil, because uh, if you are black or if you just are not white, because Brazil is a very mixed country, it's a lot with a lot of miscegenation. But if you are not white, uh, you are already uh, inserted in the working class in Brazil. Like this is this is, is very. I don't know how to explain it. It's very, it's very peculiar up here. Mm -hmm. But uh, if you are not really white, you, you are a worker. And this is almost like being a slave because the work here is very not valorized. You, you see the wages in Brazil are really slow, really slow. 
the wages, the, the minimum wage here in Brazil is 1,200 reais. 1,200 1, reais. This is the minimal, uh, 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 the minimum wage here in Brazil. But most people cannot win this. And this is very few, very few. Just to, 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 say, to say to you guys, you cannot find any place to rent in Sao Paulo for less than 1,000 reais. You cannot. A legal place. Like your salary, uh, like if you if you have a minimum salary, like eighteen percent of that is just for renting. Most people don't rent; they just go to any place. They they build houses in like any place. They go to the favelas. They go to the slums. They you know this is how it happens in Brazil. So the minimum wage is not is not to live. It's not to live legally, you know. So there's a lot of marginalization, and the, I think this is really tied to the um, enslavement structure of no pay, of not paying people. Because if people were not paid, when you start to pay, you pay a lot of less, you know? So what happened, things are very tired here in Brazil. Uh, even the white poor people are very poor, I think, because uh, everything, uh, uh, everyone is poor, you know? So, so this is really tired. What happened? is that Brazil also have this myth, I don't know how, if I is spelling right, this lie, this myth of Brazilian de racial democracy. Because Brazil didn't have any segregation laws, uh, didn't have Jim Crow. So uh, Brazilian people are really miscegenated. So uh, there is this myth that Brazil doesn't have any races, just like the America, because here everybody, um, is with everybody. There is a lot of interracial marriage, but this is not the truth. The, the, there's a truth about the miscegenation, but it's not the truth that racism doesn't happen. But these are races that is very spread and it really structures the society. It structures the economical system. There is a book of a Brazilian uh, lawyer and philosopher called Silvio de Almeida. I really, really recommend it. Called structural structural racism. Racism Structural. It's a book, it's a small book. Uh, I, 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 I can send you guys that says about the Brazilian race and class uh, interconnection. But he says, he says this, that uh, in the Brazilian politics, there was no possibility of any black person being a public person because, uh, we are, because there is this very rooted thing that the poor people, they should not belong to, to the politics. You know, this is, this is in any place. But because the working people are the black people, it, it, it's almost like the same thing. So they're not going to, to for the politics and they're not going to be voted. It's very rare. So this is what happens, you know. Here in the, in the Council of Sao Paulo, there is 55 places, 55 places for, there, there's 55 councils. Council, council people. Uh, only 13 are black. Even if uh, half of the population of the people are black. So most black people vote for, for rights because this is what they think a, a public person should be. There is not a community thing. You know, there is not a identity thing. So it, it's very, it, it's very bad. Uh, and any kind of socialist movement here in Brazil needs to understand that he, the cap, capitalist is started in the racial uh, enslavement. This is how capitalism is started in Brazil. It's how the rich made their, their, their money. It's how the rich started to, the, the, the accumulation of wealth began with the exploitation of enslaved people. This is how the capitalist, the Brazilian capitalism started and how it keeps going. It keeps working just like that with the low wages, with the scared people, with the armed forces. So this is what I, I think, I don't know if I really answered it to you, but it's kind of like that. Yeah, no, you did. That was, that was excellent. That was, uh, that was very informative and sort of exactly what I was trying to understand uh, in my question. I don't have anything to add except to firstly um, thank Luana uh, for, for her time, uh, to thank the comrades from the PESOL and in particular the comrades from, from the mess uh, in the PESOL um, who have taken their time to speak to Green Left uh, in this interview and in previous interviews that we've run in the newspaper. And I'd really like to take the opportunity to um, 
for those who have had the chance to watch this, uh, I'm sure have found it in, uh, um, informative um, and educational uh, to join us on September 6th on the Tuesday night um, at 30 Sydney time, where Luana uh, will be speaking um, about the elections and there will also be time for question and answer. So there, there are many more questions I'm sure that we could definitely be asking, uh, but also conscious of, of, of the time. So I uh, just really encourage everyone to come along to that forum so that hopefully they can hear even more um, of, of this sort of uh, really important information. Because I do, yeah, to finish, like I do really agree uh, with what Luana said right at the start, which is, um, you know, this is one of the most important elections, uh, probably not even just for Brazil, but, you know, arguably for, for the region. And, and who knows, like yeah. even more broader than that uh, for, for a number of decades, uh, you know, so, so really what happens, you know, in, in Brazil will, will make a difference in, no matter what the actual result ends up being. So I really encourage people to, to keep an eye out on what, what is occurring now. Luana, thank you so much for your time. You've been so generous. If comrades want to check out Luana's amazing activist and political work, you can find her on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram. Just search Luana Alves. That's A-L-V-E-S. And uh, okay. thank you, comrades, and goodbye.